Hello, Gary here from Pathways Homestead, and today I'm making summer sausage. We had some requests from Southern Blessed Homestead to do a video on our summer sausage. Some of you all that are maybe watching have tried our summer sausage, and so today we're making some. I'm going to go through the process. First ingredient we need is meat. Um, you can use deer meat. I have used deer meat that was lean. And I today I am using our grass-fed beef. This is 8515 grass-fed beef. Um, when you're making summer sausage, you don't want any more than 20% fat. Um, I prefer a little less, make a little drier summer sausage. But uh, um, you can use a lean deer meat, or you can add 10% pork fat to it, or 10% beef fat. If I had beef fat, I'd add 15% fat. Um, or you can use uh, ground beef or you can use ground pork um, just try not to use any more than 20% um, fat for your summer sausage typically on a breakfast sausage you might want 25% fat but on the summer sausage no more than 20% and we're going to use some pretty simple ingredients today and um, we've got four pounds of our grass-fed ground beef here and we are going to um, mix our batch for four pounds my recipe is laid out in one pound I, I've got a recipe for one pound of summer sausage and that makes it really easy to multiply or or pare down um, the recipe that I originally started with was a two pound recipe I cut it in half and I have kind of fiddled with it till I got it where we liked it so the first ingredient that we're going to use is Morton Tender Quick. Quick. This is a salt product by the Morton Salt Company. It's a curing salt. It's got some cure and a couple of and some sugar and some salt in it already. And it's it is what cures our summer sausage and makes it a cured sausage. And we use it on a lot of things. It's something that we use a lot of around here in making meat products. So. We put one tablespoon of Morton Tender Quick per pound of meat. I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I'm seasoning, I do heaping tablespoons. Don't do that on the Morton Tender Quick. If you get it too, too much, it'll get a little salty on you, a little too salty. So we're going to sprinkle that kind of over the top of this. And a lot of times when I'm mixing this kind of seasoning in this size batch, I'll put part of it on and then I'll blend it in. If I'm just doing one pound, I might just dump all the seasoning on and mix it up. But when I'm doing four pounds, a bigger batch, I tr to get it blended through well, I'll put part of one of them on and then I'll put some more of it on and try to mix it through thoroughly. One of the things you're going to notice when you start making this is smells and how they actually change when you start adding them to the meat. Alright, so we've got our tender quick in there and mixed in. Now we do one tablespoon of garlic powder per pound of meat. So I've got four tablespoons. On the garlic powder, I do do heaping tablespoons. Um, and so we're going to put some of that on. One tablespoon of garlic powder per pound of meat. And this is the garlic powder that we make here from stuff we have raised and foraged. And so it's really good, strong garlic powder. And it is dehydrated in our dehydrator, which dehydrates at a fairly high temperature. So it's almost got a roasted smell taste to it. Um, so four tablespoons in our four pounds of meat of garlic powder. Mix 
mix that through thoroughly. This is when I have the garlic powder in the bowl here, in the little measuring bowl. Well, actually, I measured it with a spoon and put it in there. It smelled one way, and when I start putting it in with the tender quick and the meat, it starts to smell a little different. It starts to smell more like summer sausage and less like spaghetti sauce. The next one, a lot of the recipes that I read and that I have started using called for whole, gar whole mustard seed. And I've made several batches with whole mustard seed and it turned out very well. But I have never been eating summer sausage with mustard seed and know that I have bitten into the mustard seed. It's always kind of slips around your teeth and you end up swallowing it whole and I don't think you get as much as the flavor. So one batch that I made, and if you were at the Ozark Homesteading Meetup, you tasted that batch. One batch I made, I didn't have whole mustard seed, so I added ground mustard. And so that's what I'm doing now. And um, it calls for a tablespoon per pound. Of mustard seed I do a little less than a tablespoon of ground mustard so, sounds like a lot but I do a little less than a tablespoon of ground mustard per pound In this really well. Then we've got one final ingredient. And again, this is a base recipe. You can add things to it if you want. There are different flavors and spices. If you like them, you can put them in here. I'm putting some, I'm fixing to put in um, coarse ground called table grind, a coarse ground black pepper. Um, you could put in cracked peppercorns and definitely make a very good good uh, summer sausage. You could add some dehydrated jalapenos and make a good summer sausage. You could um, add, use some high temp cheese cubed up and put in here and, and make very good summer sausage. But what we're fixing to do, the next ingredient, is a tablespoon, or no, I'm sorry, a teaspoon and a half of black, coarse ground black pepper per pound. All right, finish mixing in this black pepper. We don't do really hot stuff here, but if you are into really hot stuff, you could add some cayenne to this. I think I'd add a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon per pound, or maybe a light teaspoon if, if I really like that heat or whatever kind of dried hot pepper you might enjoy. I would start with a little bit and see how I liked it. But we like basic garlic and black pepper <laughs> and I did something with this recipe that I don't typically do a lot of times I take a recipe and I start fiddling with it just try to remember what I do. When I fiddled with this one, I've actually written it down. When I got it where I wanted it, I had it written down so that I know what 
I've done and I can reproduce it. A lot of times that's the struggle when I fiddle with the recipe. I'll make one that's great and I never can make it exactly like that again. Okay. So we're now to our next step is to kind of wrap or case our summer sausage. If you buy casings, you can buy casings, collagen casings or natural casings. There is a cost to that um, that sometimes can be a little bit prohibitive. Um, what I use instead of casings, and it's fairly cheap, is aluminum foil. And when you're using the aluminum foil, there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side. And um, when you wrap this summer sausage, you wrap it shiny side in. You want the shiny side against the meat. So we're going to make about one pound. I have weighed these out before, but today I'm just going to kind of guess. And if I end up making more than four, that's okay. But you're going to kind of make a ball out of it, but then you make kind of a cylinder. And how big around you make it, kind of determine well it determines what size your slices of summer sausage are but it also it may take a little longer if you make it bigger and it may cook a little faster if you make it smaller and um, narrower kind of make a just a cylinder out of it and then put it on your tin foil wrap it and then fold your ends we're going to get all this done right here Smells really good already. You can make these as thin as you want. You could even make them in a really thin, flat, wide strips um, to make more of a, almost a meat stick jerky type deal, but that works really good in the summer sausage shape. Round cylinder. When you make them very thin, you're gonna have to really stay on top of the temperature and the time in the oven. Okay, Morton Tender Quick is a cure product.
and that's what we've put in here. It takes time for a salt cure product to work. So the next step is we put these in the refrigerator and they will set in the refrigerator. They need to set at least 12 hours. More tender quick, takes a while to go through. We've mixed it all in, but it takes a while to work its way through. It needs to set at least 12 hours, preferably 24. So it, that's the time we need to let it set. And then we're gonna put it just simply in a 325 degree oven. It takes about 90 minutes. But the biggest time of this whole thing is letting it set in the refrigerator and let it cure for at least 12, if not 24 hours. All right, and we will get back on here when we get ready to put these in the oven. So we're gonna put these in the fridge and let them cure out. All right, so we have had our wrapped summer sausage Tin foil wrapped summer sausage in the refrigerator for over 20 for 24 hours now. We've got our oven preheating to 325 degrees, which is fairly warm for summer sausage, but I found this recipe works really well. So um, 325 degrees as our oven is preheated. We're fixing to put our um, put our oven in, or our sausage in the oven. A lot of recipes that I have found calls for you to just set it directly on the racks and uh, word of advice if you like getting along with your wife you might want to at least put um, cookie sheets underneath that rack so that it'll catch all any grease that drips out I just set these these tinfoil wrapped ones are not casing wrapped ones directly on a cookie sheet and I set them in the oven and they cook just fine like that so 325 degrees for 90 minutes is about what it calls for. We're going to check some temperatures when we get to that point and kind of make sure they're done. 150, 155 degrees internal temp um, is kind of what we want, I think. If that's not right, after I check it, I'll, get, I'll correct it. But, so we're going to put these in the 325 degree oven for about 90 minutes. Come back and check that in a little bit. All right, now we've we've been in here 90 minutes, actually 95. So we're going to test this. It with a meat thermometer it needs to be about 150, and it can be a little more. Be all right the way this process works. And that one's at 150. So is that one. And that one's 160. And so is that one. All right. So we know that they're done. We're going to pull them out. I turned the oven off already. We're going to pull these out and set them on a hot pad. We're going to let them cool. When they have cooled to where we can touch them and handle them, we'll put them in the refrigerator and they'll cool four to six hours in there and then you can unwrap them and we'll test them then and see how they turned out hi <laughs> we're gonna test this summer sausage now it's chilled out good in the refrigerator and we're opening it out of the foil pack that we cooked it in and we're gonna see how it turns out
looks good, smells good. See that? You can see the end and see some of the seasoning in there. The meat's a good color. Would you like a bite? <laughs> How'd it turn out? It's good. Definitely good. Mm -hmm. So there's how you do it, guys. That you can make summer sausage, which is um, fairly expensive to buy, but you can make it out of fairly cheap hamburger. Make it out of your deer. Make it out of your own beef. Make it out of pork. Um, and that's that's our product. So hopefully you guys enjoy making summer sausage. And I hope I want you to remember that God made you special and loves you very much. <laughs>